Over on Jaguar Dieter 7, a new baseball video is out. In this video, we talk about a broadcasting controversy between ABC, MLB, and the TV show Happy Days. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. This is Minnesota Vikings quarterback Joe Cap, and if you know him best in the NFL more than half a century later, it's for the absolutely incredible 1969 season that he had, where he was the starting quarterback for the Vikings and guided them to their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. To say that Cap was exceptional in 1969 would be putting it lightly, because he played an instrumental part in guiding the Vikings to success that year. He threw a touchdown on 8% of his throws, which was the highest percentage in the NFL. And thanks to his 19 touchdowns on a 12-win team, he finished second in the MVP voting and made it to the first Pro Bowl of his career. And he had plenty of incredible games in that stretch to go along with it, including his iconic 7-touchdown performance against the Baltimore Colts in his first start of the season, his remarkably efficient game in the NFL Championship against the Cleveland Browns, where he had a passer rating of 124.7 and even scored a rushing touchdown, and his three touchdown game in a 51-3 blowout during the regular season against the Browns, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, while you might know about those games, you might not know about the craziest game of Joe Cap's remarkable career, which took place one year before in 1968. Now, if you look at the stat line of the game we're going to talk about, which was his Week 4 game against the Detroit Lions, nothing might jump out off the page. Nothing might make your eyes pop. However, when you break it down, this is a performance that truly defied all logic, because no game showed how good of a football player Cap was, how much he loved the sport, and how tough he was than his 1960 victory over the Detroit Lions. Because more than half a century later, this is the crazy story behind the craziest game of Joe Cap's career. Before I talk about the performance in question by Cap, we need some context to understand the importance of the game, as well as what transpired beforehand. It's October 6, 1968. It's week four of the NFL season, and we have a big game on our hands in the Central Division between the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions over at Metropolitan Stadium. Even though it was early on in the season, the importance of this game cannot be overstated. Both the Vikings and Lions were tied for first place with a 2-1 record, and back in 1968, only the division winner made it to the playoffs. So you literally could have been undefeated heading into the final week of the season and missed the playoffs, because the other team was just one game better than you. And if you think that sounds ridiculous, just look at what happened the previous year with the Baltimore Colts and the Los Angeles Rams. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is that the winner of this game not only got sole possession of first place at a time where you absolutely had to finish in first, but got that head-to-head -head tiebreaker that could be very important going forward. And as you can tell from the highlights of the Vikings through the first three games of that 1968 season, a big reason why they were in that spot in the first place was because of the play of their starting quarterback, Joe Cap. No, he wasn't the most consistent, and he did have his stinkers, like the previous week against the Chicago Bears, when he went 8 for 21, completing 38% of his passes for 78 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, three sacks, and a passer rating of 9.7 which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. However, he called pretty solid games, had the Vikings with the fifth highest scoring offense in football through three weeks as a result, and played arguably the best game by any quarterback in the opener against the Atlanta Falcons, when in a 47-7 drubbing, he went 16-20, for 20, completing 80% of his passes for 191 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and a passer rating of 146. If the good version of Joe Cap showed up for this game against Detroit, and the Canadian football legend version of Cap came out to play in this all-important battle for first place, then the Vikings were going to be in a pretty good spot. 
the pressure was on Cap. It wasn't even a done deal that he was going to be starting this game. As head coach Bud Grant, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, had to announce the fact that Cap was his starter, and the team was quarterback shopping after the 1967 season, eventually acquiring Gary Quazzo from the New Orleans Saints. More on him in just a bit. But with the pressure on, Cap knew what he was capable of. He knew that he could pull this off, shake off his poor outing against Chicago from last week, and guide the Vikings to a win and sole possession of first place. However, there is a reason you're watching highlights of Cap from other games right now, and not seeing any highlights of Cap from this game against Detroit. And that's because Cap was barely in the game. After just a few plays, he was knocked out and had a concussion, experiencing double vision in one eye. So much for that. Cap's chance at proving himself and getting redemption in front of what was a somewhat hostile Minnesota crowd who was ready to send it into the firing squad. And he couldn't do it because he was woozy. Now, even though this was 1968 and there was no such thing as concussion protocol, the Vikings did the incredibly smart thing and took Cap out of there, replacing him with this man right here, Gary Quazzo. Quazzo could play, had a perfect passer rating when he came off the bench last week against Chicago, and on paper, seemed to be a way better option than a clearly concussed Cap. Heck, many fans thought he was the better option than Cap on paper, period, let alone if the competition is an injured Cap. And Quazzo played well off the bench, as in the first half, he went 5 for 8 with no interceptions and engineered a touchdown drive culminating in a 3 yard run by Jim Lindsay to give the Vikes a 7 3 halftime lead. But there was one small problem with Quazzo on this day, and that was what happened on this play right here. See this hit by free safety Tom Vaughn? Turns out, on this play, Quazzo suffered a broken shoulder. And obviously, you can't play quarterback with a broken shoulder seeing as it's impossible to throw the ball. To Quazzo's insane credit, he stayed in the game for the rest of the drive, saying, when you get excited, you don't feel too much. I knew something was wrong. I wanted to keep in there. We had the momentum, and I didn't want to go out and lose that. Besides, I knew Joe wasn't in very good shape on the sidelines. And his teammates knew that he was in immense pain, said Hall of Fame center Mick Tinglehoff. Quasi showed me more guts than I've ever seen. When we were on the 18-yard line, I knew he was hurt and asked if he didn't want to come out. He said no. We've got momentum going. We've got to take it in. However, once that drive was over, the adrenaline stopped, and there was no momentum to speak of, it was clear that Quazzo couldn't go anymore, and he had to be removed from the game. So now, the Vikings had a massive dilemma on their hands. Their first string quarterback was concussed and dizzy and couldn't see and couldn't focus. Their second string quarterback had a broken shoulder and couldn't throw. Which means it's time for the third string quarterback to come into the game. And now, presenting Minnesota's third string quarterback. Oops, my bad. Technical glitch. There should have been a clip or a photo or something there. Don't know why there's not, but technology can be weird sometimes. Let's try that again. And now, take two, presenting Minnesota's third string quarterback. Oh, come on. Where's the click? Where's the footage of the third string quarterback? Where's the... Wait, hang on. I'm getting something from my producer. Uh-huh. 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 All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, guys? That wasn't a glitch. Turns out, the Vikings did not have a third-string quarterback. There was no one else on the active roster that could play quarterback. And this meant that the Vikings had two options. Option one was to play a running back or a wide receiver or someone else at the position. Just run an extremely vanilla offense where you never throw the ball, and you just cross your fingers and hope for the best. I mean, it almost worked for the Baltimore Colts in 1965 when they were forced into desperation mode. Option 2, which seemed insane, 
was to reinsert this man right here, Joe Cab, into the game. Despite the fact that he has no semblance of where he even is right now, his concussed body gives you the best chance to win. Again, in no way am I advocating for this. In no way am I saying that any player or coach should do this, because concussions and brain injuries are not something you mess with. In no way am I promoting this, and in no way am I praising Bud Grant for putting a concussed quarterback in the game and potentially sacrificing his health at the expense of a win. However, remember that this is 1968. This is a completely different era, where he didn't even know what concussions were, and where no one was thinking about long-term brain damage or anything like that. Plus, this felt like a must-win game, and you need a quarterback to win. And seeing as the other quarterback literally cannot throw, because he has a broken shoulder, you might as well put the guy in there that can throw, even if he might not know where he's throwing, and just hope for the best. So now, you had a quarterback get removed due to injury, and get reinserted back into the game due to another injury, because his injury was apparently the lesser of two evils. And folks, this was the day that Joe Cap cemented himself as Minnesota's starting quarterback and won the fans back over. One writer, Ferg Foss, even said as much, and noted that on this day, Cap got a standing ovation from the fans, even though the fans had absolutely no idea at the time that he was dealing with the classic symptoms of a concussion. Because when all was said and done, not only did the Vikings prevail in front of their home crowd, taking it by a final score of 24 to 10, but Joe Cap, with the scores tied at 10 in the fourth quarter, engineered two touchdown drives to officially put the game on ice. Cap finished the game without a single interception, and even though the stats might not seem insanely impressive, as he went 6 for 14 with 100 yards and tacked on another 33 rushing yards, when you consider the fact that he had no business being out there and had no idea of his surroundings, and when you consider the fact that the Vikings won the game because of his heroics and his late game drive, it's insanely impressive. And trust me, I'm not kidding or over exaggerating when I said that Cap truly had no idea what was going on. Said Cap after the game on his performance, we just started playing football. I can't remember a thing. I felt like I took a shot to the head. When asked about the touchdown drive, which included a 51-yard pass to Gene Washington in the fourth quarter, Cap said, I'll have to read about it in the paper. Seriously, he just led his team to victory and had no idea what he did or how it happened. He lost his memory on this day, but gained the respect of Vikings fans across the country, as after this game, he went from an inconsistent scapegoat to a well-respected quarterback that fans rallied behind. Plus, it helped that later on in the year, he guided the Vikings to their first playoff appearance in franchise history, with this game against the Lions really being the catalyst for their Central Division title. Joe Cap, from his time in college at Cal, to his time in the CFL, to his time in the NFL with the Vikings, was a good football player and a quarterback who can make magic happen. But through all the touchdown passes and late game heroics and playoff wins, perhaps nothing was more magical than the game where he did none of that, did not throw a single touchdown pass, did not throw for over 100 yards, and did not even complete 50% of his passes. Because just the fact that he was able to play and play relatively well in this game against the Lions is nothing short of remarkable. You want the definition of a tough quarterback? Joe Cap is right there in the dictionary. Not a bad memory to cap off the career of Joe Cap. Not bad at all. Rest in peace to a heck of a player and a heck of a competitor. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated.
see how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.